Hello, my name is Mike Garcia. Welcome to Chili 101. Today, I'm going to show you what to do with that green chili we roasted and how to put it to use. We're going to do sauces and stews. So, grab your notes. Let's have some fun. Okay, today's lesson, the key thing to remember is let's keep it simple. This is a real old recipe going back at least 100 years from my grandmother to my mother, and I'm now teaching it to my children, and my granddaughter is learning it, so we're, we're making sure we pass it on. But the key to this recipe today is it's really simple ingredients. Everybody has this in their refrigerator and in their pantry, and there's no secrets here. Again, if, it's, if there's some kind of secret to your recipe, maybe we shouldn't eat it. So this is all wide open. You're welcome okay, to Okay, I'm going to start with a real simple uh, basic green chili sauce. This is a cold sauce. It, you can pull it right out of the refrigerator and make it real quick. And what I do use this for a lot is with dips and quesos and really quick foods. Let's say I just need a little bit of green chili that I'm going to put on some eggs I've assembled for breakfast. some simple ingredients. Uh, some garlic powder. Uh, of course you could use a clove of garlic and even diced garlic. I use that a lot uh, in my preparations. Um, Salt, pepper, and uh, a simple onion, or again here I even have some bulb onions, and I'm going to use a bulb onion for this one today just to give it a little extra flavor. I'm going to start by getting my, my chili out, which I've done, I've pulled it out of the uh, hot water here, get it onto my cutting board, and I'm just going to make enough here for a quick dip, so maybe only a few ounces of that. But I'm going to get that diced up pretty quickly, enough to uh, make a, a, about an 8 ounce dip out of some sour cream. Uh, again, real straightforward. I like to use this minced garlic because it's pre-done and it's very quick. I don't really measure, in fact you're going to see that I don't do a lot of measurements in here, but it's going to be probably about a half of a teaspoon of garlic add to that. Um, chop up a little bit of green onions. I like to cut the ends off first, but green onion lends itself very well to green chilies and uh, the cold process of the green chili. So I like using green onions. You can use whatever you like. Here's the bulb bin. They get a little bit more of the white part of that green onion in there. Um, and just get a quick dice to that. And use a nice cutting board and use some safe techniques on your cutting. And all I do now is take, put this into a nice little pile there. Simply add salt, some pepper. The onion is the key here because the onion helps bring the flavor and uh, just helps make it dance a little bit. A tiny bit of garlic powder. I always like to use garlic powder no matter how much garlic I'm using. Um, it's up to you how much you like. Uh, now make a quick chop out of this. Kind of marry it all together quickly. And you'll see, you get a little color in there. I'm going to get my little bowl. And I have some sour cream here. I'll have to get me a fresh one. Get my sour cream straight into a nice little mixing bowl. You can use this as your presentation bowl or sometimes just place it right back in here for packaging. Now, take and mix this all together. You see it comes together real nice. And what we have here is a really simple green chili dip. Now, if you eat it right away, it's it's uh, not quite assimilated yet, but it'll have some taste. Really good after it's left over. Or at least leave it overnight or a few hours. Perfect. Now, I'll salt that a little bit to taste. Because... 
people do look for the salt taste. Oh, that's excellent chili too. That's the stuff we did yesterday. An easy, simple dip out of that quick green chili we had in the refrigerator. Just remember that's just a really simple, quick way to mix up some green chili for a quick use. Now what I'm going to move to is a, a slightly more difficult, but again, very simple ingredients. And what we're going to do is just get those all together right now. Okay, real quickly, these are all the simple ingredients we're using today. Uh, uh, about a half pound to a pound of ground beef, three red tomatoes, uh, two to three um, green onions. I'm going to use a bulb onion and a green onion. Uh, I've got some of my minced garlic. We can also crush one. A can of diced tomatoes from HEB, salt and pepper, and a little bit of flour. Along with my chili, that's everything that we need for this. Of course, we could substitute some of these things, but again, this is an old recipe. It goes really far back, so this is what they had. Probably use fresh tomatoes more often. Uh, and, and again, you can modify this a little bit from uh, this basic recipe. It's real easy to do. Okay, the uh, potatoes, in fact, most of the ingredients I cut up into about quarter inch to half inch cubes. Um, you know, that, that's a matter of personal choice. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't put it in a food processor and make it too small because it's just all macerated down. But if we can just cut these down into one half inch type of cubes, it lends itself well to the, to the uh, absorption of, of the rest of the chili flavor. So just get these down to where they're a bit ready for us to. And again, you, your choice on exact sizes that you like, you have to experiment with a bit. I just found this stays together for my one week pretty well. So quarter inch, half inch pieces, um, approximately, it's not an exact science. And again, who's measuring? Not me. As long as it tastes good, it doesn't really matter what size it is. They should be uniform because they're going to cook at the same rate, but that never works out exact for potatoes anyway, so you can be the judge. Go ahead and get my chili dice. Now, Again, a preference on the chili is how big you like it to be. Now, we already pretty much seeded these fillets yesterday. And I don't want them to be too big of chunks because I do want to spread the flavor throughout. Now, if you'll notice this, when it freezes, it does keep a lot of the liquid from the chili inside of it. And that's good because we're going to use plenty of water here. So it looks like I've got my ingredients about ready to go. We're ready to get our cooktop prepared. Okay, what you're going to need is a large capacity, uh, easy to use. I like these non-stick uh, cooking pans. I, and I like the ones with the shoulder because you actually can do your flip food. Um, and this is a great non-stick. This one happens to be T-file. You can use what you like. Um, some of the copper bottoms work real good for this kind of cooking, but you want a large capacity because um, basically we're going to um, need a lot of space here to kind of throw this around a little bit. So make sure you've got the correct pan and you want to have a rounded edge so that we can move it around real nice and easy. Uh, it's uh, not quite up to temperature, but you want to start by browning the sirloin. So I'll get the sirloin out and spread it. Now this starts to happen fairly fast, so there's some things we want to do to it as it gets to cooking. Now, your preference on when and how you want to season. Um, I like to every time I add a little bit of an ingredient to add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. Uh, only, only because it seems to cook well like that. It's pretty good practice. So I'll get a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and of course you'll see at every step I'm going to keep adding little by little into that. Now you can, everybody's got a different method for keep grounding up their beef. Uh, if you like, you can flip it, but um, 
Uh, you really don't need to. There's no fancy technique to go on here. So we're going to add ingredients by browning really slowly here. I want to get this to just to start to turn red. So by the way, I have these potatoes off to the side. They're going to be a second ingredient here. As the sirloin starts to brown up and there's still a little bit of red left in it, we want to go ahead and add our onions and the garlic. So again, not really a measurement. You can kind of guesstimate. Um, again, a, a clove or two of garlic. And we put the garlic here on low because we don't want to burn the garlic. If we put it on too high and too long, it will burn, but this will be just fine. Not too much. Now what that has to do is these onions and the garlic has to brown them just a little bit. So this is going to help it out. And you see it's starting to liquid up real nice. Okay, all we need is a minute to go by here, and that has. As you see, now the red is almost completely gone. Timing is important here. We take our can of diced tomatoes with the water still in it. This is great water for us. So we're going to add that into the sirloin mix. And we're going to add the chili. All of the chili. Don't think just because the chili tastes hot, you don't want to use so much. Because what we're trying to do here is bring that flavor to the party. So that's what we want that chili for. Now, get that assimilated a little bit. Get some beautiful color happening. And again, the smell in here is just absolutely wonderful. Starting to smell like Grandma's house. This is too much. Okay, this is a critical step. I'm going to add one full can of water from that tomato can that I brought out. And you'll see it really is watery now. Now I take my flour and I want to get a nice mixing device or a fork. You can use a whisk. There's a lot of different things you can use. And I want to spread this out pretty evenly. Now, a, lot of, uh, a little bit of flour goes a long way, so you've got to be really careful with this. And it's a real critical step, because what we're really doing is making a roux sauce out of this. So this, in this step, is we want to start mixing this up and not stop. Uh, we, we want to ensure there's no lumps in the whole thing. In fact, I might use a little more flour, but that doesn't look too bad. And I keep mixing this, oh, I'm telling you, a good five minutes. Don't stop. Now while we've got this roux going real well, and if you'll notice I've separated this out. So without the potatoes, what we've got here is a really good traditional chili. You can use this on all kinds of foods. What I am going to do here now is saute up some potatoes. Now, you could start the potatoes in this pan and move them into that. Uh, or you could also do them separately. I want to show it to you separately because this alone is a chili. When I saute up potatoes and put it in, we're going to turn it into a stew. So I'm going to get these starting to brown up. And I'm going to get this down to simmer. So we'll get that down nice and really low. Looking excellent. The right tool here. And of course, a little bit of seasoning. Pepper. And I always use ground pepper because, again, it's, it's not ground yet, so it still has a lot of that flavor. Pepper after it's busted open just doesn't last too long. Get those sauteing real nice. Most of this kitchen cooking, there's no real rocket science to it. Just keep an eye on it. If you walk away, you're generally going to find 
something will go bad when you've got your back turned, so keep your front to it. Okay, potato's about ready to dance here, looking real good. So you see, you start to get the brownness on the potatoes. Now you can take these out and drain them. They're not too greasy here. All I've used is olive oil. They're starting to sweat a little bit of that water, so it's perfect. And right now, we add them to the rest of the mix. So here, can't really flip this pan. It's a little bit too liquidy here. I'm going to mix these up really nice. And look at that. It's just wonderful. Oh, Grandma, can you see this? Look at what I got going on. Dad, are you watching? Woohoo! Delicious. I'm hungry. Guess what we're having for lunch. Okay, so I've taken the chili now, taken the basic chili, and I've turned it into a stew just by adding the potatoes. So we're going to let that thicken up. At this point, I make sure that it's covered up and the heat is down. A couple of things to watch for. To ensure the volume is correct, what I'm doing is if I added just enough water to keep everything floating. Now, if I keep it covered, it's going to make this water steam inside and drop back down into the pan, and that's what I want to do. Best not to let it get too dry, because after it sits a while, it is going to absorb, the potatoes are going to absorb a lot of that liquid and a lot of that flavor, and it's going to get thicker. You can reconstitute it later with just adding a little bit of water. And you'll see I've left a little bit of the grease in. You can skim if you like. I like that because it brings in some flavor from the meat and it'll absorb into the potatoes also. But I'm looking for just enough water to float the ingredients. Mm, just barely. And it should be free in the pan. If you've got anything sticking, it's not good. And what you want to make sure is, is there's no lumps from that flour. So we did assimilate the flour in here really nice. Um, so you got to use your imagination. Um, the ingredients are real dynamic. I stay away from too many spices. If you add too much cumin, and you can, um, it really imparts the cumin flavor. Uh, paprika, the same thing. And um, sometimes I'll use turmeric only because of it's got some healing properties and it adds a little bit of yellow color to it. But as you see, we're not having any problem with color and it wouldn't be bad if we had to add some. So uh, your call on that. Um, but modernizing the recipe, it, it's easy to do. This is based on what was on hand a hundred years ago. And again, easily we can trace back this basic menu a hundred years. Oh, would you look at that. Wow. Steam coming off. This is awesome. We're going to have a pretty good lunch today. You've been watching Mike Garcia. This is Chili 101 Sausage. Remember, the most important thing you put in your food is love. So make sure you're handling that food properly and make sure you take your time. Until next time, let's talk about dishes that we prepare. I'm Mike Garcia. See you later.